Hi, my name is Jack Collins, National Cancer Institute, work at the ABCC, which is the Advanced Biomedical Computing Center, and I'm the manager of the Scientific Computation and Program Development Group. The applications and goals that we have here at the ABCC for the NCI is to provide computational support for the scientists who are doing cancer research here, NIH scientists uh, who run their applications here as well, and to provide support also for NIH grantees so they can run uh, here. We uh, provide computational hardware, software, consultation, and collaboration, so sometimes we actually do the work for uh, the scientists, but the whole goal is to be able to enable their science through computation. As more and more data comes from high throughput biological technologies today, you can't analyze that data with an Excel spreadsheet or from pencil and paper anymore. So it really requires databases, high performance computers, a lot of disk space. So with that data coming through, it really ha now has become uh, critical for data intensive computing. It's data driven biology. So the data now is determining the hypothesis and the models that you would use or what's different in a way that a gene is expressed, protein levels, things like that. To take in that type of data, you have to have some sort of a computational algorithm to go through and, and analyze that. So you're doing data discovery, biomarker discovery, that kind of data analysis, which is computationally intensive. Modern biology now, you have the biologists who are very good at understanding how you know, cellular processes and cancer work, but now with the new technologies, you're generating perhaps hundreds of gigabytes or terabytes of data. Uh, they're not used to having to deal with that necessarily. That's a computational problem. And so you have to have people who are mathematically skilled to understand how to analyze that data. You have to have people who understand the computers. You have to have folks who are bioinformatics trained to be able to bring in the rest of the databases and the genes and lists and that along with the biologists. So that cuts across several different fields. Um, you might not bring in just people who know, um, say, genetics, but then people who know the proteins and the proteomics, uh, people who are running microarray for expression analysis, microRNAs. Uh, so you, you've got a lot of people coming together to try to understand what, let's say, an effect like cancer or some disease has over the whole body. Mining, all of this data has been an issue as more and more high throughput technologies come online. As you get millions of data points, then you can't really run that on your PC anymore. So what happened is you would just scale the experiments down to be able to fit into the computational resources that you had. Uh, with STAR-P, you're coming in basically with a MATLAB type of interface. It's familiar to a lot of folks, but now you have the power to run on a parallel processor in the back end with large data memory, which is what we're supplying for researchers now. They can get to hundreds of gigabytes of data uh, in memory at the same time and you know, go across uh, 32 or 64 processors. So that makes the, the challenge is no longer the computer, it's the do I have a good model and uh, can I analyze that and then relate it, do I have good data? You've got a lot of different scientists all focused on the same type of problem, but then each one of them looks at a slightly different piece of that. So trying to get together a centralized view uh, where you've got lots of people um, bringing out really what's going on, uh, that's important. And that, that requires an integration of a lot of them. And so there's, there's new programs actually coming on here at the Cancer Institute which integrate all of that. And so having a common interface where they can all uh, look at their problems and, and everything so that they don't have to be experts in computing. Some of the benefits for using Star P have been it allows the users to have a familiar interface such as MATLAB. They don't have to go and rewrite code. They don't have to be experts in the computer science. That has been taken care of in the back end by Star P that they're able to get access again to large amounts of memory, too many processors, uh, not have to know how all of that works, and they're still working within a framework of their own um, computer on their desktop. So we've seen advantages as far as speed ups of maybe 200 fold by being able to take advantage of the memory, restructure the algorithms just a little bit, and then running it in a parallel processor way. So you're changing the workflow from maybe 52 hours 
for a run down to 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully the goal is by being able to get your analysis faster, be able to do larger data sets, that we can get insights into the mechanisms and causes of cancer much more quickly. And you know, all of us have been touched by cancer in our families one way or another. To be able to actually discover biomarkers, discover cancer risks, be able to hopefully get towards therapeutics so that we can at least manage cancer, uh, I, I don't know how much more exciting you can get than that. Um, you know, that's truly um, something that if we could get to there, uh, that's sort of the holy grail. And anything that helps us analyze this data faster is just going to get us there faster.